welcome back to our podcast series, Share Your SAP Story. And on this episode, our special guest from SAP, Sanjit Mall, is very happy to join us and share his unique story about SAP. So, Sanjit, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast series. Welcome. And um, just a quick intro for our audience. So, Sanjit is a Senior Vice President for SAP Sales and Service Cloud in SAP America. He's been with SAP for a long time, I believe. Um, how long have you been with SAP, Sanjit? Yeah, it's been a long time, 22 years. Oh, wow, 22 years. <laughs> Amazing. So um, it's very similar to my background. I have seen that you have been in SAP right from the old on-prem to now this cloud. So just how do you describe your journey within SAP um, all along these years, um, yeah. especially around CRM? Oh, it has been fascinating, right? I mean, I, I, I say that I only work for one company, SAP. It's not really true. I work for three companies. They are all called SAP, right? But they, they, they have been very different, changing its view of the world. How do we do business? Depending on what the industry was doing at the time. So going back to CRM 7.0, or at, at the time I joined, it was really 20C30 time, right? Yeah. Which is approximately 2000, late 2000, beginning 2001 kind of thing. And we were doing this CRM solution, which was one of the first things, uh, next generation products outside ERP, which SAP was doing. There was a lot of, lot of excitement, a lot of focus on doing the next big thing, CRM. Other other things like BI and BW as well, but CRM was the definitely one of those new generation products. Now that's been then the the big idea there was how do we diversify into other business areas? We we've been very successful as you know, Sanjeev. I mean, CRM seven zero, which is basically you can call it the last variant of the on prem world, has been vastly successful. It's been used in very very many mission critical applications as a mission critical application. People have done lots of amazing stuff at, with it. I was visiting a customer recently, and when they showed me what they do with this, is it's mind boggling. What we envision and what people are using this is related, but they have taken it to a next level altogether, right? So going there in late 2010s, we started our uh, on a cloud journey like everybody else. Uh, like everybody else, we also wanted to be on the cloud and as fast as possible. And as fast as possible means you take what you have, give it certain characteristics like multi-tenancy, uh, declarative programming, and uh, do some operations on it and get there as fast as possible. That's what we did with uh, the first versions of what we call C4C, Sales and Service Cloud, back in the day, 2011-12. And I think we've been very successful at that. What I will call this is Gen 1 cloud product. Like everybody else in the market today, I'd say everybody in the business world is Gen 1 cloud and we are too. Now, since 2021, we have been working on the native cloud version of sales and service cloud. And that's what we are. Uh, we truly believe that's the time we can say it's been the, the transformation from an on-prem product to a truly cloud native, infinite scale, flexible, composable, adaptable, uh, AI centric. That's that's industry tailored. That's the journeys uh, we are at at the moment. So long answer to a short question, but it has sure. been 20 years, right? Yeah, no, amazing, amazing. So I think if you see like SAP is like well known in, in when it comes to ERP, everybody knows SAP like market leader in the ERP space. Right. But for CRM, like always, there have been some like many times customers wonder really how serious is SAP about the CRM mm -hmm. marketplace. Mm -hmm. So sitting at that chair, heading this whole product. Um, for sales and service cloud, which is CRM. How do you describe to somebody uh, that SAP stand and why should they consider SAP um, when it comes to CRM? Yeah, uh, it, it's a, it's a, so if you're so strong in one area, right? Yeah. Like SAP is in the S4 ERPs of the world, there always would be a question, well, what is the, what is the, what is the point of doing anything else because you are so successful? Yeah. Obviously, everybody wants, and rightly so, diversification, and we want to 
uh, we as SAP want to serve end-to-end -end customer needs, not only bits and pieces of it, right? Because that they get more value, we get more value. There is more seamless things. Why? How do I know SAP is serious about CX? Well, if a if it's an organization which is driven by as all for profits organizations are driven by margins, uh, uh, um, things like what's the value we do to the stakeholders. The best indication is if they're spending money on a product, right? And if they are, then you know they're serious about it, right? And in this case, we have been spending really uh, talk only about narrowly about my product area, sales yeah. service cloud, right? Uh, and that gives you an indication. It, it would be very easy for us to say at the very beginning of 2021 when we started this whole cloud native journey and, and the real uh, transformation from uh, a Gen 1 product to a Gen 2 uh, or real cloud native product, it would have been very easy. We are very successful. The customers are happy with the product. We can incrementally invest in it and call it a day and this would work, right? I mean, that would be the strategy we will take if we were not so, so serious about it. However, we are very serious about it. We definitely think that to be relevant in this market a decade from now, yeah. a technology which was invented in 2002 reads a, needs a real uh, renaissance, right? I mean, that's yeah. what we have done. Because we are serious about it, we do. We are not a short-term player. We, we do things in, we do think in decades, right? So. That's the best answer I can give. If we were not serious about it, we would not invest this million man hours or more into doing something which gets us prepared for the next decade, not today, not tomorrow. So we, we, we have that horizon. And obviously our customers don't only have backend needs, they have the whole gamut of requirements, their digital transformation, that's what we want to help on. And CX is one thing, but they, there are other places we are very serious about whether it's BTP uh, technology platform, whether it's HXM, whether it's it's other line of it is the our idea is we'll it's not about back end or front end. It's about your digital transformation, how best we can help, and whatever tools and technologies is needed, we 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 are in there with our portfolio to help you get there. Now that's that's great perspective. I mean, you mentioned earlier, um, Sanjit, about this whole. Uh, AI and machine learning, how it's like now this new whole generative AI people are talking about chat GPT and all. So can you share some detail like where you see that being um, augmented as a part of CRM offering from SAP? Yeah, no, absolutely. So I think Gen AI, AI, ML, deep learning and all those things are really transformative. It, it actually will change, I think. Uh, the way we do business, not only that, right? I mean, I do think that to a large extent, the way business software is written, or all software, but let's focus on business software, how business software is written five years down the line, six, eight, 10 years down the line, is gonna be dictated by what AI ML transformation has happened to this. It's not gonna be written the way it's written today, that we okay. take a feature and function and build something which resembles what a customer need is today. Okay. And it's very much a feature function driven uh, paradigm. Sure. I think the next generation would be not that, it would be, the needs and the application change. What does not change, I think, is the behavior, the uh, the reaction, the reaction to a stimulus of the society, of the industry, of all the all the things which we call the things we sell in the market at. These things don't change. That so the applications would become, in my mind, more go away. Data was become going to become very important what insights you can bring to the table out of that, that's that's what with the definition of an application would be. Give it, I mean, and I think one of the, other than the fact that we are very deeply invested in AI, ML and all those things, uh, and not only as a superficial bit of it, when we were designing our next generation sales and service cloud, we actually built this thing into it for that transformation. We knew at that time that it's not gonna be AI and ML sprinkled over a legacy software is going to do anything. The software is going to def be defined by that thing. That's why we built into it. And, and lastly, I'd say uh, that 
one of the things of that transformation I talked about the way the business applications are going to be written, the first step really is to break it down, right? To be able to leverage ML, AI, uh, Gen AI, all those things, you need to break down your application into very small chunks so they can actually be transformed, composed in a way, and AI, ML can actually make some sense out of that. That's what we've done with the next generation cloud native sales. So we are we are in a good place at this moment with the investment we are doing in AI and ML and the investment we have done in the infrastructure level so AI and ML can actually work efficiently. Great. So would it be possible for you to share some use cases where you see that how these AI is going to help CRM users like in near, near term, some of the oh, use cases. Oh, oh, there are. Uh, I mean, I can talk all day about that, right? Sure, sure. <laughs> and I'm sure that we. Uh, I'm sure you can too, right? But let's 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 take a very simple example, right? Uh, a very very basic stuff, right? Yeah. When an email comes, and I'm talking very basic, but it has yeah. outsized value, right? Sure, sure. Uh, email comes uh, to a call center, contact center. And it needs to be routed properly to to uh, to uh, uh, to the department which is going to handle that, right? Yeah, right. Now, generally, we we have a good uh, idea of how this category works, but with Gen AI and all those things we can create models on, you can be very specific to the point that you can already write a response, right? Yeah. To to that thing and. Of course, you'd want this to be routed still to a human being at the moment to yeah. say the response is correct, but the human being's job has been simplified to a point that if we see 90, 95% hit rate, we might even say that, okay, there is no need to, uh, there is no need to really review everything which it is doing, but yeah. sample it, right? Yeah. So that, yeah. so what you're seeing is amazing amount of efficiency, and this is very simple stuff. Like ex yeah. expand this to, to a to a larger uh, context. I mean, we all know predictive has been in the in the in the uh, in our minds for a long time, right? And yeah. predictive yeah. is much better than uh, reactive, right? Got it, got it, got but it. with the AI and ML, and specifically the data and the models we have, right? Yeah, yeah. We can actually truly make it work. I mean, that's just transformational, transformational for certain industries like, yeah. like the heavy uh, asset incentive industries. If they can predictively maintain it, do it, 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 it would be great. I mean, I, I'll take another example, which which is also very, uh, which was which is fascinating to me, right? I mean, if you look at if if you are a country, I mean, yeah. I, sure, we are not a country, but right. I yeah. mean, countries do business with uh, business. Uh, and uh, if a large customer or country, if buying something which is really asset heavy, right? Obviously, they they do uh, they do um, RFPs and things like that to all the competition and and all the competition or all the industries do reply to it. But this is not a simple send a brochure kind of thing, right? Yeah, this is yeah. very specific to what they want to do. It requires maybe months and months of massive engineering resources just to respond to that thing, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. and 80 to 90%, you will not get the deal. I mean, that's yeah. the normal. So yeah. what if we can create, I mean, we know all that system. We know the opportunity exists. We know what the customer wants because we've been using the uh, right. sales and service cloud to do that. Yeah. How, if we can generate a response exactly tailored to this thing, I mean, that, that saves a lots of, lots of resources. So yeah. I think it's just the scratching the surface. As soon as we get to the point where the system is ready to dance with ML and AI, 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 ML and AI algorithms generated AI, the world would we would be laughing at how did we do applications like that like six years ago? That's strange, right? Yeah, that's yeah. that's that's the level of transformation I am seeing that that's going to happen. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And when you say in terms of scratching the surface, I mean I personally always say that we are only limited by our imagination when it comes to AI. You know, there's so yeah. many use use cases. Let's take example like I'm a sales rep. I'm trying to reach out to some company. I'll do some research on the industry, how they are doing compared to the competitors. A lot of those things I can automate using this AI. You know, I can just get exactly facts and then go with a very specific value proposition. Hey, you're having these challenges. We can help you with this. Um, mm -hmm. So, and, and Sanjeev, don't underestimate the, yeah. the fuel of it, the data, yeah. the information. I think 20 years ago, 
AI and ML were like a fledging uh, <laughs> branch of science, right? Yeah. And and main reason was, oh, well, of course, there were many reasons, but two, three reasons which come to mind is compute, right? I mean, the compute power was not there. But more, more, uh, more so, we have probably forgotten this, it's Sanjay, because we've been living in a bubble, really, right. of all the transformation integration was a big deal right i mean you remember like like in the 2001 2002 there was no standard there was no o data there was no web service it was all funky proprietary stuff which happened right i mean it's very difficult to do any kind of uh, insights into data which is hard to get to right so yeah, these true. days that's what the side transformation of data is democratized yeah. information is fully available. Now AI can shine, right? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I'll just go back to your previous uh, you know, comment about the whole on-prem CRM. Um, and, and I talk to so many customers every day. Still, there are so many customers using on-prem. And yeah. their biggest challenge is how do they move from the legacy CRM to the latest and greatest what SAP has to offer? And yeah. uh, what, do, what, do you, what would you recommend to such customers? What's the best approach for them to think about such migration? Yeah, I would say the, so we, of course, are working with our field organization, our partner organizations and partners too, because they have a lot, large role to play in this, right? So we do want to talk about move, how do we go about doing that and, and what are the resources available to it? We, we'll hear about this. We should probably do just one session for that. But sure. this all is work in progress so that we can get people from the on-prem world to the latest greatest, because I think that's where it needs to go to, to leverage all the good stuff we talked about. Now, what I do think is what I, what I tell the customers is, you know, if you CRM on-prem probably was implemented like 15 years ago or 10 years ago at the very latest, right? The world was very different, right? I mean, the world, I mean, I, I, again, we have probably forgotten it. Right? <laughs> it, it 2005, six, Amazon was a curiosity. Yeah. Right now, Amazon is a necessity. Right? True. So, it's, uh, <laughs> so that the world has changed a lot. I'm not saying that every part of the world has changed, right? But yeah. ton of things have changed. So, my my advice or recommendation would be to look at this thing not as what you have done in CRM seven C zero, but to see what is the business need. Yeah. How do we uh, map this to the solutions we have available in the in the portfolio and be be flexible about it right i mean a definition of crm in 2003 4 5 6 7 is vastly different than a definition of crm in in 2023 not because not because the the product end user has changed yeah. because the product or the scope of the product can leverage so much good stuff which is around it that yeah. it it becomes a very different tool to the yeah. to the to the person who still is a sales rep and service rep but we can serve them so much better if we open our minds to what is the need of the customer now not yeah. how we have implemented 15 years ago so yeah. Do think, uh, give it a thought, work yeah. with us, we'll work with our partners. We have a lot of experience in that, so does our partner. So let's make this a, not a technical move, yeah. but a move which actually delights your end user, your your business stakeholders. That that would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that's the right approach. Even one of our customers we were talking about the same CRM migration, and they mentioned the same thing, that our business has changed. We are going back to the drawing board. We said, let's define what exactly we want, what how we want our business to run, and then we'll figure out how to Correct. implement that in solution rather than like trying to figure out what we have on prem. How do we move that to the cloud? Correct. So, so Correct. that's the that's a very right uh, recommendation. And, and in in some cases, that might be what it needs to happen, but that True. would be rare in my opinion. That would be an exception yeah. rather than a norm, right? Yeah. So, Sanjit, you have been in SAP space for so many years. Share with some story, unique story, which has touched your heart with customer <laughs> or any from project implementation or whatever. Just share some story. Uh, I, I just share a, a light one and a little bit serious one, right? Um, yeah. uh, so when I when I joined SAP, uh, this was 
very close to um, uh, September 11, 2001. Uh, this is vivid in my in my memory because of this disastrous event. But obviously, I was joining and very excited to join SAP. And I remember um, the the SAP shuttle picked me up at the Frankfurt Airport, and and the first thing I noticed was well. All the cabs here are Mercedes Benz, which is fascinating, right? I mean, I was coming from London at that time where this was black taxis. And obviously everybody knows and heard that the autobahns, the driveway are all like no speed limit, drive yeah. like whatever you like, right? I mean, that's exactly what happens when you come down. I mean, that's the ad for Germany. The first thing you do is get on the highway, A5, and you do <laughs> as fast as your car can do, right? So that was all fascinating. And then I... I came down and uh, and um, uh, the cab dropped me in front of. Uh, at that time, it was called EVZ. Uh, I can't tell you what the EVZ, <laughs> but it's loosely translated as the headquarters, sure. right? Yeah. Now it's called Waldorf One. And when you look at this thing, and I said, "Wow, you know, I've seen this building so many times in pictures and and." Uh, 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 like every ad of Wall Street and yeah. every time Wall Street talks about SAP or anybody talk, that's yeah. the place they show. Yep. And right, yep. I'm right here. Now, what do I do? <laughs> that, <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that's what we figured out in the 23 years I've been here. Yeah. Yeah. But it has been a fascinating journey from a place where it was a total alien thing to yeah. me, that building, which I only saw in, in pictures, to what I call it would be it's it's like a home to me when I go there it's yeah. it's it feels like oh, that this 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 is what I know right so yeah. that's that's uh, the fascinating bit from being a total alien to recognize yeah. that building from picture to something now to talk a little bit about serious stuff right I mean and which it's fascinating to me like the amount of influence and right influence we have as a SAP, not really CX, but as SAP is a brand on the on 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 uh, uh, um, the day to day business, right? A day to day business as mundane as waking up in the morning and uh, having doing your brush, right? <laughs> that thing is there because there was somewhere SAP in the chain somewhere, where, yeah, right? Yeah, and if yeah. you and it's a simple stuff, right? Like a toothbrush. Like, what's the big deal about that? Yeah. There's a massive big deal about that, right? And I would not appreciate any of that till I know from look at from an SAP system point of view. Maybe the wrong way to look at it because yeah. probably you can. <laughs> but <laughs> as that's uh, that's the route available to me when I look at it from like to manufacture it, to produce it, to truck it, to get the retail, to sell it, to invoice it, to build it. I mean, this is amazing. And if SAP was not there, how would you do it? I have no idea. Right? Yeah. This would be pro <laughs> proprietary stuff all over the place and probably breaks everywhere, right? But yeah, it, it, that's what, what makes me so to a degree proud when I go to my, my with my daughter to, to and she's nine, to a, a department store to buy stuff. I tell her, it's always here because SAP is in the background. <laughs> Otherwise this this would not be here. And it, it, it could be, it's not only department store, a probably nuclear reactor somewhere in the world is being served by SAP, which is, Serious stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to muck around with things. Yeah. With that kind of stuff. And <laughs> it's probably one of those. That's true. No, you're right. Like many times we don't even think in those terms, like how many lives are being touched by SAP platform all across the globe is like amazing, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So so thank you so much, Sanjeet. I know you really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for sharing all your insights and wishing you all the best uh, for the success of this uh, new platform which you have built for SAP. And we're lo looking forward to working together. And uh, thanks everyone for joining this podcast series. We'll be back uh, next episode soon with another leader from SAP or from our SAP customer. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sanjeev. Thanks, everybody.